So how good is the Carl Zeiss 25mm 2.8 ZF.2 Distagon? Let's find out. I went out on a walk in Merchville, New Jersey, 10 days after Christmas, with the Distagon mounted on my Nikon Z6 with the F to Z adapter. As I have said many times in my videos, I love going out with one camera and one prime lens. But before we look at some photos, let's go over the specs on the lens. Extremely well made, all metal construction with a CPU, which means you could control the aperture from the camera on Nikon digital cameras. Now, there was also a ZF version of this lens that came out in 2006 with no CPU. The ZF.2 came out in 2010. So the apertures run from 2.8 to 22 in half-click stops with a lock at f22 for use on Nikon digital cameras where you set the aperture to 22 and control the aperture with the control on the lens on the camera. Filter size is 58 millimeter screw in with a bayonet mount lens shade. It weighs 480 grams or 16.9 ounces. Now that compares to Nikon's 24 millimeter 28 AIS lens which weighs under 10 ounces. There's a nine blade aperture. And one of the great features of this lens is its close focus. It will focus down to 0.17 meters or 6.7 inches from the focal plane. And that's about two inches from the front of the lens. So it gets you really close. The focus throw on the lens, it's, it's about 360 degrees. It's about a full turn to go from infinity to close focus. Now this lens is no longer available new. However, you can find them on the used market, usually in the $600 to $800 price range. Now I plan to spend a couple of hours walking around Merchantville, but as I was walking down Maple Avenue, I came upon St. Peter Roman Catholic Church. They always go all out decorating for Christmas and I ended up spending most of my time photographing on the church grounds. There's many statues, and for the holidays, they put up all these trees and other decorations. And so I just shot a bunch of pictures there. Um, this shot of this statue was at 2.8. Most of the others were shot at f8. And you can see the wreaths on the door. They have this, a statue there with a waterfall below. I mean, there's many great opportunities for photographs. You can see the trees in the background. Now, those trees, I believe some of the parishioners pay a fee. They put the tree in the ground. And, of course, they're removed after the holidays. And then they decorate those trees in honor of a deceased family member. This lens, this 25 millimeter lens, I think was just the perfect focal length if you're going to use a prime lens for this type of photography. It gives you a nice wide view. Also, it focuses very close and is very sharp. I have found that when photographing at or near infinity, it is sharp edge to edge. It's also very sharp close up. This was shot at 2.8, uh, excuse me, at f8. And you can see the sharpness, hopefully, on the statue. And, of course, the church at this point um, was a little beyond the depth of field. But here you can see the great contrast. Again, this was photographed at f8. Just love the look of this lens. Colors are good. This was a... Uh, cloudy day and I just think it worked out great. Now one thing when you're in a spot like this where, where there's so many potential subjects just take your time walk around look at different angles and you can see how many different angles I shot of this church and 
you know, which is the best one? Which one do I like the best? I'm not sure. I think that last one with a lot of the trees in the foreground is one of my favorites. And also because of the close focus capability of this lens, I was able to get in close and still so show a lot of background on some of the decorations on the trees. And another thing to notice is look at that beautiful bokeh, very smooth. You can see the sharpness here. These were actually shot at 2.8. The shot of that blue ball and this red stocking were shot at 2.8, as was this picture of the angel. And just look at that sharpness, both on the angel's face and the little child. So I was very happy with the results there. So then I continued on my walk finally, and there's many beautiful old historic houses in Merchantville. A lot of these were shot at F11. Here was a carving on a tree stump, on a tree stump outside of one of the homes. Again, it's very sharp. Of course, I was down to F11. Now, I don't like to always shoot at F11 or smaller because you can lose sharpness due to diffraction. I really didn't see much of that, however, with this lens. Shooting up in the, into the sky with the clouds and the trees. I mean, you could see the sharpness on the branches of these trees. Here's another house. Again, these were shot all at F11. I don't know. I just think that that's a great focal length, as I said earlier, for the church, and was also a great focal length for photographing the houses as I walked around Merchantville. Many different styles of homes, and the image quality with this lens uh, I was very pleased with. This is a old train station, which is now a coffee shop, and again, this colors are great. The sharpness is excellent. And there's very little distortion. So it makes a great lens for this type of photography. The colors just jump out at you. Look at the reds, how they're very saturated and looking great. This is one of the most historic houses in Merchantville. It's called the Centennial House. It was built with materials from the Centennial Celebration in Fairmount Park in Philadelphia in 1876. Beautiful construction. Here's just a few people riding their bikes down the street. Again, this was pre-focused. At f11 with this lens, you got quite a bit of depth of field, so it's a great street photography lens because you could just point and shoot. Here's another shot done that same way. And this is a different church, still with their wreaths on the door from Christmas. And the reds, as I said earlier, really produce well with this lens. This is a little novelty house on the corner of one of the streets. So I went home. I realized that I never shot anything in my walk in Merchantville at the minimum focus distance. So I set this lens for its minimum focus distance of 6.7 inches and just moved in close to a, a plant that we had in the house. I took it outside. And you could see the sharpness there, but you also see one of the advantages is how much you see of the background. And that can be used some, for some really creative pictures. Let's say you have some flowers in the foreground and, and a mountain in the background. You could get real close to those flowers and still see a lot of the background. So there's a lot of creative uses for a lens like this. And one last thing I did, I wanted to check the sharpness because I had read reports that in closer ranges. It wasn't very sharp out to the edges, and, and I found that to be true. So I shot at four feet at 5.6, and the center is very sharp, but as you get out to the edges, you will see that it does not hold up all that well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I usually come out with a new video every Wednesday morning, at 11 a.m. And if you have any questions or want to make any suggestions on videos you would like to see, please email me or leave a comment in the comments below. I will talk to you next time.